We all agreed that we'd make three contacts a day. Um, I had learned from Nathan Ricks that I needed to learn to let a tool talk instead of me talking. And um, he, is, he thrust upon me the urgency of learning how to invite. He thrust upon me this urgency of learning how to invite. And then to get out of the way and let a tool do the talking. And so I started with the idea that three times a day I would put an audio cassette. That's how many years ago it was. I became a stockbroker. What populates the open meeting? When in any 30-mile radius you have 11 home business reviews going on in the prior week. Why is it 11? Why is it not 13? Why is it 9? I don't know. Just 25 years later, I know the number's 11. That's <laughs> the <laughs> so truth. If you've got 11 home business reviews going on in a week within a 30-mile radius of the open business presentation, now you have people who listen to an audio or they watch the video, they came to the presentation on purpose, and now what do they see? They came to your home, they probably met with one brand new distributor who didn't know much, but they got some juice, they had a chance to try the product, maybe they bought a bottle, uh, they've seen a presentation. Now their next step in evaluation is to show up at the open meeting. That's the next step on the ladder of escalation. If a person comes to the open meeting as their first step on the ladder of escalation, where do you go next? Mm -hmm. Kind of tough, you know? And by the way, if the open meeting is 95% distributors, that's not the problem. That is a symptom of the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is that there weren't 11 home business reviews that went on in the prior week that each had seven prospects in the room who could now arrive there to decide. Because that's what the open meeting is for. It is to those, for those people who are in the decision-making process to decide, right. and it is as a belief builder for those who are already in the business. It doesn't build belief if it's 95% distributors. It does the opposite. But if it's 50% new people and 50% distributors, then it fills its purpose. When we don't have enough of this stuff going on, then that doesn't work. What's the next step in the ladder of escalation? You come to the open meeting, and typically by now the person is enrolled. Usually by now they are enrolled. They might get enrolled before that. Now the spoken, the spoken wheel, what is it? Now it's a little bit different. Now this is no longer the open meeting. Now this is the regional. And the person who is conducting the regional is the one who has been most affected in conducting the open meetings that have gone on in the surrounding area. And so the ladder of escalation then goes to the regional event. From there, it goes to the national convention. Okay, that's the ladder of escalation. Uh, not properly understood by most people in our business right now. People in our business think it's a great thing to bring a prospect to the regional. Well, where do you go next? What happens next? The person who did this, 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 and this they're far more likely to be engaged in our business at that time. Each next look, each next step is a bigger, better look at our business. More encouraging, more empowering. Um, now, is there something wrong with bringing a prospect to here? No. It's always right for a prospect to see the business. But is it as right as doing this? No. I promise you there is a right way and a wrong way to do business. There is a way for it to be proven and predictable. There is a center line. There is a way for you to kind of know in advance what the outcome is. The, the more of these things we do correctly, the more we can predict what the outcome will be and have that prediction be positive. The fewer of these things we do, then the more luck is involved. The more luck there is involved, then you don't know, you know check in with that. Okay. So going back to our pillars, what we have is a desire to stop the outflow. We want to stop the hole at the bottom of the bucket. And by the way, there is there is no individual um, there is no individual leadership mentor. That's right. It's more impacted me than Maxwell. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he and, uh, is. He, he is committed. I will tell you, he will be with us in September. I believe that we'll have a long-term relationship. We're still working out the details of that. Um, he has a unique ability to deliver a, a principled leadership message that is appealing to people of all different faiths, though he is devoutly Christian. He has a unique ability to do it and yet be embracing of other cultures and faiths, and so, and, and he's absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. So, again, he will be with us in September. I'll announce that in, uh, in St. Louis, and I believe we'll also announce at that time a long-term partnership. Um, so, we will carefully address, we will carefully address this thought of, of inspiration. Um, we'll do that in a variety of ways, but we will, I promise you this, honor, honor viewpoints that are, that are disparate. And there, there is, a, there is a certain, there is a moral goodness, rightness, and correctness. And that will be the theme in a variety of ways for people to, to understand it himself or so. Um, next, calendar and events. There is, uh, in our business, something that I think is misunderstood generally. There is a, uh, what I call a ladder of escalation. A few of you who have listened to me speak before know of the ladder of escalation. The ladder of escalation goes like this. Um, here I have a... I know my arm looks great, isn't it? 
<laughs> my candidate tree. Right? Yeah, my typical recruiting member. My typical recruiting member only gets the low hanging fruit. They never taught how to create and maintain a candidate list that goes beyond this. That's why almost all phone calls, almost all prospecting calls are made by brand new people. Because they call the low hanging fruit, and either that low hanging fruit joins them and gets engaged in the business, or they don't, and if that doesn't launch a business, then they quit. That's what mostly happens. Um, when people fully develop, when they really understand and fully develop, grasp the concept that you can still live your life, so a candidate that grows in front of you forever, then suddenly you can see the fruit up here that's buried in the foliage, then suddenly you can see all this fruit up here. When you've developed the skill of learning how to invite, now you can get a ladder that gets up to this fruit. You, pretty soon, if you really take it to the, to the place where it can go, then you see the world as your, as your candidate. I and mean, there's no such thing as running out of prospect. I mean, you know, yeah. really and truly, no kidding, I'd go spend an hour and a half and I can have an incredible candidate list. But that's 25 years later, right? I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. That takes a while. It's a skill that can be developed. Well, now we finally have our typical recruiting member, and here's the candidate. And that candidate now becomes eligible to see the business. How do they become eligible to see the business? Because our recruiting member has learned how to invite. And so now we have to have this ladder of escalation. And what's the ladder of escalation? If, and, and obviously know that there's all kinds of room for individual expression. Uh, what I will show you, not just now, but over the course of the coming weeks and months, is what I describe as the center line. Okay, here's the center line. I will tell you that if you do the things that I do the way that I teach you to do them, that the result for me has been one of the most remarkably successful careers in this industry. I mean, I, I, there's just very, very, very few peers. My income has just always gone up. It's gone up if the company was going down. My business has never gotten smaller. It's always gotten bigger. Um, you know, when it was time for me to, to change my direction because I needed to be around new people, I sold my business for $7 million. Mm -hmm. It took a matter of, of only months to be back over $150,000 a month. I mean, there, there are very, very, very few people who have had an experience like the one that I've had in this industry. And that is because I was taught a center line years ago. Uh, almost nothing that I teach you is of my own device. I teach you what I was taught. I mean, what I teach you is what I was taught by Nathan Rex, Craig Tillotson, Craig Bryson, Jeffrey Burry. Um, it, it, it happens to be expressed via my personality instead of theirs. But I'm teaching you what I was taught that made it possible for me to do these things. There is a center line. Now, there's all kinds of room for individual expression. If Andre wants to go and do something different, great. I never tell somebody to stop doing something that's working. If you're doing something that's working, keep doing it. When it stops working, and it will, know that there's a center line. <laughs> <laughs> it will. I mean, that's it. it happens over and over and over again. We all have our unique situations that make it possible for us to succeed in some way. You know, I'm, I'm a, I've got this enormous circle of influence because I own a great big company, and I've got all these guys that have to join me. It makes it look like I know how to do network marketing. But pretty soon, that stops working. Mm -hmm. right? There comes a time when almost everything that is unique to you stops working. Right. And now, we have to get to what is what works generally for all. And that's the center line. That's the proven predictable pattern of activities. So, please don't anybody say, I've got something that's working and Randy told me to stop doing it. No, do what you're doing until it stops working. When it stops working, know that there's a center line, that there's a proven predictable pattern of activities. In my estimation, there's no luck and there's no guesswork. The positive outcome possibilities are 100% for someone who just stays in the community long enough to develop the skills and to develop the character attributes to make it possible to get association with a lot of people. Okay. So the first step on the ladder of escalation. I would like the first step on the ladder of escalation to be um, the simple delivery. And by the way, if I say something that you're a leader, if, I, if uh, you're in Lance's group and I say something uh, and you have a question about it, ask Lance. And if Lance has a different opinion, do what Lance says. Okay? And then I want to be really clear. I want to grow and edify leadership. I don't ever want to be in conflict with leadership. If, I, if you're in Andre's group, and I, and I say, you misunderstand, check with Andre. And, if Andre, and then you act on Andre's clarification. Okay? All right, so now, here's the way that I built the business forever. When I was in Merrill Lynch, they taught me to make 100 calls a day. 100 calls a day, 100 calls a day, 100 calls a day. And it took me a long time to get there, but finally I, I emerged at a point where I could make 100 calls a day. Um, not very many can do that. You've been a broker. Not many make 100 calls a day, right? That, by the way, takes zero skill. None. It takes only willingness. You can dial the phone 100 times a day. You can read a script. You can do that. We don't because it's uncomfortable. 100% of people can do that. When I quit being a broker, I didn't want to be a broker anymore, I went to people who failed as stockbrokers. That's where I launched my career, with failed stockbrokers. They couldn't make 100 calls a day. But I went to them and I said, could you make three? Well, if you were told to make 100, and now I'm, I'm telling you you can bail out and just make three, you know, three was very easy, right? Mm -hmm. Three's doable. But you have a different frame of reference. No one told you to make 100 calls a day. And so making three seems like a big digit. 
You guys aren't making three contacts. You guys are not making three contacts today. I mean, in this room, that's not happening. You're not making three contacts today. If you were making three contacts a day for the last 90 days, no matter how bad you are at it, you would have sponsored more people than you sponsored. Mm. Yeah. You know, you're not making three calls a day. It is about activity level. It is not about proficiency. Let me say that again. It is about activity level. It is not about proficiency. You can be horrible at it if you do enough of it. And then the laws of the universe conspire in your favor because as Cicero correctly said, the skill to do comes from the doing. You can be horrible at it if you do enough of it. And if you do enough of it, you won't stay horrible at it. That's the truth. But it all comes down to activity level. Behind activity level comes what? Empowerment or lack thereof. Because the activities are not difficult. The difficult part is having enough personal empowerment to engage in activities that are easy.